Um, I'm Alan Swithin Bank. Um, a number of you in here know that I do all kinds of strange science stuff. I've been working for Stanford for 23 years now, hard to believe. But I started out at the Linear Accelerator Center working on X-ray beam lines and vacuum ultraviolet beam lines, doing data collection, that sort of thing. And we actually, Slack at that time was actually an Amiga Developer Center. And uh, we did all kinds of things with Amiga. It's actually used to control beam lines and that sort of thing. And uh, made uh, interface cards for the nuclear experiments. So we, in fact, I actually laid one out that ran in a it was a 4000T, I guess. We ran experiments using a control by the Amiga, that sort of thing. So I, I, and even before then, I was playing with Amiga. So, um, so I've been, you know, in the community forever. Um, as far as Fortran goes, um, some people might think laugh at that, but actually, in the high-performance computing realm, Fortran's still a contender for language, um, though it's not Fortran 77 like you'll see here. <laughs> um, I guess uh, since this is. Uh, Fortran demo, I should at least compile something. Um, where's my mouse? There it is. Uh, let's see. I had a shell here. I used to have a shell. I don't know where it went. And now the top of the screen is hard to find. Okay. Is there some way to adjust that video down so I can find the top of the window? <laughs> Okay, well, I can get at it this way. Um, that'll work. Uh, I can't quite get to it. I can, I can reopen it. Um, oh, it's going to open it in the same place, though. Yeah, if I can... View it somewhere. Keep trying. Get lucky and yeah. See that? Well, I see that's cutting the video off. That's the problem. Yeah, um, that's gonna be a little bit problematic. Well, I can kind of work with it this way. Most of what I need to see is there. Um, all I need is a command line. There's one. Okay. Let's see. If I can spell. Uh, work. Hmm. Okay, so um, let's first look at the code, I guess. This is just a real simple, this is just straight Fortran, nothing to do with the Amiga. Um, and that's still going to be a problem. Um, Anyway, it's pretty straightforward. Just uh, define a character string um, and uh, write enter to quit to quit and check to see if you entered quit. If not, go back. Um, if you're not familiar with Fortran, nine and uh, you put write nine star is like write to port nine effectively, which is the standard I/O, uh, which in this case would be the shell, and then. Uh, Format A just means use the A uh, as a character format for the um, for that output and uh, read nine five hundred. Um, but anyway, it's just it's um, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, let's get over here. This is going to be a problem. Okay. Hmm? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's that. And uh, compiling is just compiling. F77 minus star. If you're wondering what that is, that just tells it to, uh, for Absoft compiler peculiarity, it just says put all temporary files into the RAM drive. Um, give it a little heap space. Um, just to just cause. Oops. 
and then that's called interread. See sideways. Um, what is it? I N T R. Oops. Oops. Okay, so that we just compiled Fortran. Um, I can run it just by from the command line. Type in I N T R R E A D. It'll run. If I type in quit. Says, oops, can't find a sub, uh, can't find a function, which is these here, which I didn't compile purposely just to see. The nice thing about Absoft Fortran compared to some is that you can actually write your subroutines as overlays and call them externally. So to do that, um, it's a slightly different format. Um, you include a minus R in that, and then. Uh, Can't hear you. Is that supposed to be minus? Uh, minus, of course. This keyboard is, I haven't used it in a long time, so it's a little bit different size than I'm used to. Um, let's see, minus 50. The only bad thing about um, the overlays is they must have six character names, which is kind of annoying, but um, it does work. Oh, yes. Uh, it's hard to see what I'm doing from the side. <laughs> okay, that one, and there's another one for string wings. Uh, we can look at those in a second, but, um, oops. One of the complaints people had Fortran back in the day was character handling, that sort of thing was difficult, but you can write really simple little functions that change, you do change the location, check the string length, all that sort of stuff. And, and with the overlay like this, you just throw them in and use them. So now if I do quit, or not quit, I do um, enter read, enter quit to quit, and I type in something else that won't let me. It's not really smart, so I can do something like that, Q-U-I-T, that, and it'll still quit because it's just scanning the string for the function for the term quit or go. Um, the, these functions are nothing special. Uh, just look if it's find the length or change the characters. Just uh, do that. Um, so you look for anything between 65 and 90, which are um, capital letters, basically in ASCII or something. I think yeah. Well, anyway, they're ASCII characters anyway, and you. Uh, Add uh, 32 to yeah 32 makes them small case yeah so anything in there and add 32 just because of the way the ASCII coding is done so you could just change it to lowercase um, quit and then um, the other one string length is uh, this is the boring part I'll get through in a second just to see what Fortran looks like if you've never seen it before implicit not Fortran is a strongly typed language so it if you don't tell an implicit none, letters I, J, K, L, M, I think there are five or six characters in the alphabet will force it would be an integer value and everything else would be a floating value. So if you say implicit none, then you can use um, any character you want for your integer or your float, just so you don't have to force yourself to make. Since you're only allowed so many characters to be forced to then use only a particular character for your integer, that kind of thing makes it even harder to make sense out of the code. Um, so that. Uh, Yeah, get out of this way. Yeah, get out that way. Okay. Um, so that's the boring part. Just Fortran compile, whatever. So, um, Absoft made a. They actually still make nice compilers. They made a fairly nice um, compiler for the Amiga, but they didn't quite. What did they just do that time? They didn't quite do. Uh, 
do it in an illegal way, let's say that. They, uh, uh, sure, you want to cite, they used, um, Fortran has a statement that's called equivalence, where basically you can give a name and uh, point it to some other element, like you can give names to the elements in an array. So you say, set up your array, and then you give it a name equivalent and give it the index to the array. And then you can, instead of having to go through the array, you just use these these things off from the equivalent statement. I'll show you in a second what it looks like. And then you can, <clears throat> can access the array just using the names instead of act, going through the array and indexing the array and all that. Mm, sort of, yeah. I'll show you in here in a second. Um, where is it? Here. I had that out. Oh, just not being able to get to the top of the page is a little annoying. Um, go back into here. Um, That one. I don't want that one. I want the book. There it is. Uh, in the process of all this, I wrote a book. Uh, it's 720 pages on how to program the Amiga in Fortran. Basically, it's it's essentially a mad dash for the RKMs with all the things you need to understand to make Fortran handle the Amiga system. Plus other things on like how to program the MIDI port and a bunch of stuff on graphics and things that are outside of the scope of the RKMs of th things you can do. Um, let's see in here. Uh, oh, there it is. I think it's in this one. I got a note here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Here somewhere. Um, here somewhere. Oh, I can grab hold of that. Yeah, here we go. Um, so, Mirigo works um, on structures, which, as far as handling uh, system commands, I think structure is just a piece of memory that's been set aside to hold a particular bunch of data that the system wants in an organized way that the particular command you're trying to execute expects to see. But it's just a chunk of memory, nothing special about it, except that it has the data you need to perform a particular task in the order that you need to, in order to perform that task. So what Absob did is, um, so you would uh, generate an integer um, array and then let, this is a new window <clears throat> array. So these are all the elements you would need to set up a new window structure to open a window on the Amiga. So then you can set left edge, top edge, width, da 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 da, and you would um, call equivalence. Window element one is now going to be a uh, new window left edge. Window element three, because it's two bytes uh, for the first part, is um, window top edge, etc. etc. Cetera, et cetera, through. Um, and then when you want to um, make the system call, which we'll have to get to in a second, um, you can use these things instead of trying to remember which element the array is. So um, the problem with this is you, you basically can only set up one or one um, structure. That's This is the equivalent of how Abstop did it for the structure, um, unless you use new names. And that gets really inconvenient really fast. So they did do, um, let's see if I can. God, I gotta be able to get to the top of the screen somehow. Ah, got lucky. Um, uh, what they did do is they um, provided a piece of assembly code. Um, now what? Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is so painful, but it's painful for me too. <laughs> um, how do I get out of here? Oh, F7, yes. Safe file, no. Exit word, perfect, yes. Okay. So, um, what they did is they provided a hook they called Amiga.sub, basically, it's an, another overlay. Um, which uh, looks like 
which basically, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. The, the way you access a system command is through libraries. And libraries are just what it sounds like, a collection of things. So a library is a collection of the instructions you need to execute a particular command. They're like the assembly of code instruction to open a new window. So all these instructions you need that would open a new window on the screen are in the library, um, in the graphics library, in the intuition library, I believe. Um, but in any case, you call, so you call a library and then you say where in the library to look for the code you want to execute and then you set up the registers in the CPU, address data, et cetera, et cetera, and give it the, it's a LVO, library vector offset, I believe that's what it stands for. Uh, tell it where to start executing code in the library and it will take your, the way you have the register set up and the, the data that you've given it and the structure that you've set up, like the new window structure, uh, and shove that all through the open the new window segment of the library and the new window will open up on your screen. Um, so they gave a piece, the problem with the, doing it the way they did with the equivalent statements, equivalent statements is it's the problem with point by value or point by um, pointer essentially. So um, the, uh, they did it by, I'll see if I can find the code here. Here somewhere. I'm used to working with multiple screens too. <laughs> uh, so um, here we go. So this is the assembly code. Um, so the, the, in order to access, you don't actually have to yourself set up all, tell, tell the system all of the registers to use and all, and all that. It, what you do is you give it a trap, what's called a trap value, and then that is decoded and sent into the, to the operating system and says, okay, based on the values in the trap values, I need to use A0, A1, D0, D2, which registers you want to use, and find the data in this structure at this point or that kind of thing. Um, and then it also gives you the offset in the library to go to that particular command you want to execute. So what this piece of assembly code does is um, for see what what the um, address by value is what um, Absoc did, and what you actually want to do is access by pointer. So you can tell it to use multiple structures just by pointing to different ones, rather than having to make 27 copies of you know new window left edge one, new window left edge two. You just now what I've done is I took that and with Absoc's blessing, I recoded their stuff to actually access the um, structures that are set up like an alloc mem, set up the actual memory as you would from the C command or you know, in C or anything, it's the same basic idea. Um, allocate the memory, take the pointer and give it that way and then fill in that pointer. Um, so this um, code just, um, just does that basically. So, um, it's, uh, and I'm not going to try and go through all the assembly code, but you can see in here, do I want to use the graphics library, do you want to use the intuition library, da, 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 that kind of stuff. And then you set up uh, the pointer to the graphics library, the pointer to the, to the uh, intuition library or whatever, whatever. It could get really, really boring really fast, and I probably go through too much of that. But um, the uh, bottom line is that now, with the modifications I made, you don't have to use the equivalent statements in the, in the Fortran code. You can just use the same command calls that you would use in um, in C, say, for example. But instead of just using the in C, you can just basically use this command right out of you know, right, uh, you know open window, that kind of stuff, just as that, because it's, this operating system understands C, I guess you can look at it that way. In this case, you have to actually use this inside of a call, um, this Amiga 2 call. I think I have one in here. Um, no, I guess not. Um, I'll find one in a second. Um, so with this, with these trap commands, um, and the other problem is that I had when I was doing this is the, these trap commands that um, I'll look in a library here in these include files. You include these include files like the intuition stuff, DOS stuff, or the DOS library. Uh, these are my own names. Uh, common stuff, uh, workbench 2 stuff, utility stuff. But 
in any one of these, um, you just these are these trap values. So for open window, um, you this number is what the what you put into this system, what you feed to this Amiga dot sub. And this is actually not very different than what's how C actually works and all the rest of them. The, you give this function to a to a, a command in, to a or to a segment of the actual operating system code in the Amiga when you're programming in C, and it does basically the same thing. But in Fortran, it's not wasn't set up to do that, so you kind of have to do a lot of it on your own. So. Um, if you want to do the activate window command, you need to use this string. If you want to do the unlock base command, you need to use this string. Um, I had to do some recoding of those because of the way that pointer to, uh, or point to value, or point by pointer, and I had to recode some of these. Because there, there are bits in here that say which way you're supposed to do that. So, um, and that, uh, let's see, I'll go back to, so I actually made a form to do that with to make it simple because I there are about a thousand different calls in the in the operating system somewhere around there with these different types of things so um, for the different commands and I did about 200 of them for Fortran the main common ones but so once you have that Amiga sub thing working and I'll be happy to go you know I'm kind of going fast and scattered here because I'm not quite sure how you demo Fortran um, if you have questions say something or uh, yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, you're using the vector library vectors, so that yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I should have made that more clear. Yeah, I'm actually that that what I'm talking about when I say you use that, but that's what you shove into the jump table and stuff. Um, so, but once you have that that Amiga sub thing working. Um, then you can do things like here you call it execute say string, which is a function um, say string. So um, rather than okay, this so what this code is doing is you can read it here. Um, it, I'm including the DOS stuff for the say command, and I made the say string is a string that's going to put in, and then there's a handle for the for the um, for the device, a few things like that, and including some other common. Uh, Parameter assignments, that sort of thing. So, open character mode, new file. That's just the opening the um, opening a handle that you can use, and then you use that to talk to the say to execute the say string. Um, so, the say string is in say. Uh, it's a pitch of 100. The sound, you know, sound level of 150. Hello, and then it also is going to um, it will say file and it'll read a file. Which is in on the F data disk, which I've already assigned uh, before you guys got in here, and then you can type stuff in after that. Um, so, where's my shell again? This is I have a bad habit of closing the shell when I'm done using it. I'm not sure if I did that or not. Um, I'll just open another one. Uh, okay, so let's get back to where we were. The, So, let's see, what was that called again? X you say, I think is what I called it. Um, there it is. X you say, that's right, okay. So, should say something soon. I'm not. I'm supposed to have sound. It did have sound. It actually, it looks like it's hung up for some reason. Um,
It worked. Uh, it worked, and before you all saw it, it's working. Is it, oh, there we go. Yeah, but it it was actually supposed to say a whole bunch of stuff before yeah, it this. It, oh, I didn't. Oh, it's going that way. I don't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I didn't hear it. So um, anyway, so you can say. I can type. Okay, so I can, yeah, I don't know where it's coming from, but I can sort of hear that. So then just quit to quit. Um, and, you know, that's not too exciting, but once you get this, again, with this Amiga, then you have access to the IDCPM, all that sort of thing. So here is a... Um, Uh, IDCPM window, which is one of the. Uh, if I could type ID, what did I say? IDCM key. That would work better. Yeah. Key. So there's a window uh, popped up. You now this is all coming out of Fortran, and uh, the code is pretty straightforward. You um, grab the include files, you need the exec file, you need the uh, in, uh, com, com, in, anyway, what the, there's the, the libraries you need, or the include files you need for the libraries. And now, what I've done is, and you could set up structures using like alloc mem and, and do them all yourself, but what I've done is I've created overlay commands like window is a, just simply sets up a window structure. So you window, you give it the parameters you need, and then uh, um, bang, you have the structure. And if you do it again, you get another pointer. You don't have to worry about um, you know remembering which one's which. You just um, uh, just you know give it a name here, and you don't have to worry about remembering which of these things you need to access because if you're using that equivalence of statements, you drive yourself crazy really fast. Because you'd have to do a different equivalent statement for every single one of these for every window you set up, basically, which would be be horrible. Um, and then user port, uh, the, um, it's just the, you give the window and then the I, window user port is one of the functions which you use to basically talk to the window. Um, so you can actually, go, knowing that this is the pointer to the window structure and this is the pointer to the window user port in that structure and get that number. And then you can just, uh, it's, it's really very much like you do in C except you have these little extra wrappers where Wait for it to sleep until you get a user port message. Is when you click on the um, click on the little uh, close gadget, and then uh, re and then you take the message out. It's, this is basically everything you would do if you were programming in C. It's just you have to actually wrap the command in this Amiga two thing so the assembly code can accept it, shove stuff into the jump table for you, basically, and then hear the message and, and uh, um, so and uh, release the memory and all that. So bail I just. Release mem. I have a. I wrote my own release. When I, that, when these things allocate memory, I actually set up a, an array that keeps track of the pointer to the um, to the, to the to all of the structures that I set up. So alloc mem and all that will do that for you. But I found it much simpler to do it myself rather than depend on on the standard command stuff to do it. Um, then I can just this release mem just goes through those arrays and, and gets rid of the mem. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but then that's, so it's really very straightforward, very similar to doing, um, you know, coding in C. It's just, you just have to be used to um, Fortran, basically. And you can go, once you have, like I say, once you have this, you can go much farther than just, um, you know, opening a window or whatever. You can do um, things like, uh, well, Wink is cute, let's see. Um, Wink. Wink opens two windows, and if you click on it, you get a different so a different um, uh, image for the uh, for the air. You know, if you click out here, then it becomes an arrow again, and they'll go away in a few seconds uh, on their own. It's just a, so you could have uh, identify your window by a different you know cursor basically, um, and then uh, other things you can do like um, draw image. Does draw image work? I'm not sure. That, okay, so scroll tile. This is um, an example where you, you're not constrained to just working on the workbench itself. You can um, you know, open your own windows and all that, sort of, or you open your own screens and all that. So, uh, so 
So this is opening its own screen and then scrolling a message across the screen. And unfortunately, it's now happening up here <laughs> above the screen. It's scrolling, basically scrolling that same thing across uh, up here in the bar that you can't see. So it actually is scrolling in the screen bar, not not the window bar. And it'll be done in a while. And then, uh, it might be a longer message because it's a longer bar. I don't remember now. Um, Uh, it looks like it's frozen, actually. Oh, that's a problem. Yep, it froze for some reason. That has actually never happened before while I was doing this. But, well, it happened before. It will happen again. Let me start. Sorry about that. I don't know. I was actually going to try and contact them and find out because the, they certainly don't support the Amiga anymore. Um, but it would be nice if they did. I was actually going to try and find out because um, there was some some homemade things that people did. There wasn't any commercial type other than AppSoft that I'm aware of. Um, Oh yeah, I, I I have it on a USB stick somewhere. Um, yeah, that that I'm happy to give out. Um, like I say I'll I would if I could I would figure some way to make this 700 page book available, but we might work that out somehow. Um, thing takes a while to boot. It's got a PC card in it and all kinds of other things, so it'll get back in a second. Um, there it comes. It's promoting the retina card now. So, so that's and we'll be saying a big hello to all intelligent life forms everywhere. And to everyone else out there, the secret is to bang the rocks together, guys. Okay, and now maybe I can move these windows down when I open them before I get too carried away so that we don't have to go through the pain of... Uh, this isn't going to go on too much longer anyway, but... Um, Let's see, the one thing I need to do certainly is, this is yeah, I'll show you one, a couple other things, and then um, uh, call it good, I think. Uh, let's see. There's just some, it's just fun stuff like using glitter objects from Fortran and that sort of thing that I can show here pretty quick. Sorry. Oops. One, two, let's see. If I don't do this, it won't find some of the images and things it needs for the more complicated examples. Um, okay, so now. Uh, let's see, don't want to show anything more now. I don't need to show anything more now. I'll just do this. Um, so, oh, draw image. Yeah, you're, um, let's see, it's not, not very exciting, but you can see, draw image, um, This is just the same image repeated across. If, if you could see up here, it would tell you it was a high-res 8-bit screen across the top bar, but you can't see it, unfortunately. But So it's just opening up a high-res 8-bit screen, and uh, then it goes away. Um, 
and using that same image, though there's an image overlay which basically opens an image structure. And uh, I, this is prior to me um, doing, this is a very early one, so it's, a, it's not quite the same sum, but uh, Absoft has these S word, S byte, whatever, which will put a word or a byte or a long wherever you tell it to. So um, up here I was actually just, um, I have a command called struct, or, uh, which basically assigns a struct, uh, and this remember and all that is associated with that release mem stuff I was talking about. So um, clear public memory, remember it, which means shove that pointer into that array I build, and then um, 20 is how many bytes it should be. And then you just uh, shove stuff into that, into those places. This, um, is well, I'll show you the struct command, but it basically just builds a window. <coughs> Excuse me, <laughs> sorry. Um, a structure uh, to to, um, to for the image, and then uh, and then uh, um, that's basically all it does. And then uh, so that's the image. Just as a bit plain image, you can actually just um, make it, <laughs> so to speak, as hex values. Uh, there's some, uh, and I'll do a couple more examples. Um, where so now you see in here, you know, close window, close screen, all that are just these are the same calls you'd make as though you were in C, but you just put this omega two wrapper around it, and it does it for you. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, let's see. So then. Uh, Display test, uh, which one is that? Um, oh, that's one thing you can, of course, um, link and that sort of, you know, uh, your, these overlay files, you don't have to, you can put, you can, in the local directory, or you can put them in the L directory, or you can assign and path and, and add and all that sort of stuff, whatever you want to do. Um, but, uh, let's see, what's that one called? This test. Oh, here we go. Button press is, uh, uh, button press is okay. Yes. Uh, let's see. Um, where am I? So I'll do it first unlinked. Um, if I can type. Um, and it's loading up. There's a runtime library that has to load up first, so it takes a little while to do that. And then. It's also going to take a little bit while longer because it's now actively calling, you know, pulling all those things up. So, you know, you hit this and stop, go, stop, go, and close with the gadget. Uh, again, up here, there's messages that you can't see about this, the, um, the uh, size of the screen, that sort of thing. Um, now, if I do it, this linked version, um, button press out L, uh, it will still load kind of slowly initially because it's doing a runtime library. Um, but once that gets done, you can link the runtime library. Then it, you know it's very quick in there, right there, like that. So you know you, you're not constrained, even though you're using a lot of overlays. Um, you know you can make it fast, basically. Um, there is an important thing, though. So that. So you'll notice here it's you know f sub is l minus star to use the temporary in memory dot l okay then that's the the main you're going to do and then all the overlays you're going to link to it um, you might want to I always want to and sometimes forget that you shouldn't uh, use the same name for the linked version but if you do the same name and you try to write back the link stuff back into the to the same file. You get one of those crashes that after a cold restart takes about eight minutes for the drive to figure out that it can reboot again. So you don't want to do that. You always want to use a different name, and then if you want to use the same name, rename it after you're done, uh, just in case you ever do this. <laughs> um, and then, uh, let's see, so what's a fun one? Um, you can actually work with fonts and you know, make your own fonts. All that. Anything you can do in any other language you can do in Fortran with this setup. Um, Let's see, button press, what else have I got? Um, oh, Baka Bob. Yeah, you can use um, uh, litter objects, sprites, whatever, just as you can anything else. The, the problem is with um, this one, I wanted to use the collision, the do collision, 
And although do collision is a uh, official Amiga operating system command, it does a little impure thing in there where it actually pokes a pointer that the Fortran uh, assembly, that Amiga.2 thing doesn't quite understand. It took me a little while to figure it out, but I actually had to write a little bit of assembly code that does a load pointer to a RAS port, basically. It, it, um, you have to tell it where, you know, you force it in rather than, than uh, putting it in through the trap vector kind of stuff. Um, uh, I think that's about all there is to it. Yeah, that's just, it's not very much code, but once I figured that out, then I could actually use the collision. Uh, very few. I think this is the only one that really got me. There's a couple other, oh, there's another gitch I'll show you, not a gotcha, but just I had to do, um, is, um, oh yeah, this RAS size. Um, the, like, if you go through the RKMs, you'll find a lot of C macros. Well, a C macro, you know, is a string, basically, that C calls. Well, Fortran doesn't know how to call and use that string, so I had to write my own RAS size command, which is just, you know, find the size of the, from the raster. Um, from the you know from the hyphen width, <clears throat> um, and that's all it does. So I just wrote a little bit of Fortran that does that, and just call this RAS size instead of the system macro. Um, but then, uh, so I'll just run the link version this time. So so. There's two little ghosts, and you can move him the arrow, and he jumps away from it if you hit it. Uh, and if you hit it enough times, he'll go away. Basically, it's not a exciting game, but you could write a game in Fortran if you wanted to. Um, yep, hit him enough times, and he died. Uh, so there's that. Um, and then probably I need to hit a, something up here to make it go away. So I'll just make it go away by Amiga M. <laughs> Um, and then you wonder, you know, I'm doing all this stuff in the command line, but you don't have to do it in the command line. If you um, set up the work, proper workbench structures and include that in the code, um, you can actually double click launch Fortran. Um, so it's just a, it's got a, a, a custom, you know, vertical slider knob gives you the value. And then uh, this one, um, the requester, um, You'll notice that it's uh, it's not going away, and its value is changing. It's actually adding a random number there, um, but until you hit not, then it finally will go away for good. Um, just things you can do, and then um, one last one um, you can do. You know, like hit to the middle if you want to adjust your, or you can enter a value. You know and whatever, and then uh, hit return, or hit, and it tells you the last value and goes away. So it's, uh, I don't know, that's a demo of Fortran on the Amiga. I don't know <laughs> what you want to see from that, but um, like I say, I have much more information that will make more sense of it. Anything you want to do on the Amiga system, basically I went through the entirety of the, of the version two RKMs and, and did everything you can do. Uh, there was only one thing I couldn't make work, and that was Boopsy. Um, and I probably could make it work if I really wanted to, but it was it was like a do collision kind of problem. It was a little bit more complicated, and I just kind of, you know, I don't really need to use Boopsy uh, and went off there. So anyway, that's all I got at this point. Uh, if you want to ch check out my 700-page book or the AbSoft Fortran manual, oh, here's a, if you ever want to do system programming, mapping the Amiga, if you can get a hold of that book, gives you all the vector offsets to the libraries and all that kind of stuff is very handy. Um, and uh, with that, yeah, anybody has a question or want to run a screaming, uh, it's up to you. Mm -hmm.